Select the site for IV insertion considering a number of factors including the size of catheter needed, the accessibility of the patient's veins, and the degree of discomfort for each site. Upper extremity sites are more durable and are less likely to have complications such as thrombophlebitis. Therefore, use lower extremity veins only if an upper extremity vein can't be cannulated. Gather equipment typically including IV catheter, antiseptic solution, tourniquet, tape, transparent dressing, and if blood samples are desired, collection tubes, and often a syringe and needle. Prepare the IV solution tubing, flushing all air from the tubing. Place a tourniquet proximal to the planned site. Sometimes having patients clench their hand and or let their arm hang down helps fill their veins with blood. Wear gloves. Cleanse the skin using an antiseptic such as chlorhexidine. In selected instances, for example in children for whom cannulation may take more than one needle stick, consider injecting local anesthetic or applying a topical anesthetic. Note that topical anesthetics can be modestly effective but must be left in place for about 30 to 45 minutes. Rest the body part being injected on a comfortable surface. Hold the area steady with your non-dominant hand. Apply gentle traction to the vein to prevent it from moving. Traction may not be necessary for larger veins in the forearm or antecubital fossa. Hold the catheter between your thumb and index finger with the bevel facing up. Approach the middle of the vein at a shallow vertical angle of about 10 to 30 degrees. Puncture the skin and then the vein using a slow, even motion. Blood visibly entering the catheter indicates puncture of the vein. Lower your fingers so the catheter is more parallel to the skin and advance the catheter and needle about 1 to 2 millimeters more to ensure the plastic catheter has also entered the vein. This must be done because the catheter tip is a little behind the needle tip. Advance the plastic catheter over the needle and into the vein. If properly placed in the vein, the catheter should advance easily and painlessly. If there's resistance or pain, assume that the catheter is not in the vein. In most cases, it's preferable to stop the attempt and start over at a new site. However, particularly if there are a few suitable sites for insertion, it may be possible to pull the catheter back a bit and then advance it into the vein. Occasionally, the catheter is in the lumen of the vein but cannot be advanced because it is pushing against a valve or a sharp turn in the vein. If you suspect a valve is the problem, try to advance the catheter while flushing it with fluid from a syringe or from the IV tubing. If you suspect that a sharp turn is blocking the catheter, for example, if the catheter appears to be correctly placed inside a tortuous vein, pull back gently on the vein with a finger to straighten it and then try to advance the catheter. Once the catheter is successfully placed, remove the needle. Once you remove the metal needle from a catheter in a vein, do not reinsert it. Doing so could shear off the catheter tip, releasing it into the bloodstream. If you need blood for testing, withdraw it now, either using a syringe or a vacuum collection tube. Remove the tourniquet. Attach the IV tubing and fluid and open the tubing to allow infusion of fluid, which should flow freely. If fluid does flow, watch for swelling around the insertion site, which indicates extravasation and an unsuccessful insertion. If fluid does not flow freely or extravasation occurs, Remove the catheter and apply a dressing over the area with gentle pressure. If pulsatile bright red blood appears in the catheter or tubing, assume intra-arterial placement. Remove the catheter and apply manual pressure for about 10 minutes and until the bleeding stops. Then apply a pressure dressing. Cover the successfully placed catheter with a transparent occlusive dressing and then tape it. Loop the IV tubing and tape it away from the IV insertion site to help prevent accidental traction on the tubing from dislodging the catheter. Carefully place metal needles in a sharps container. Write the date of IV placement on the dressing so this information is readily available to all healthcare professionals. This helps ensure that the IV is replaced when due, thus decreasing the risk of infection. Music